Hey folks, so my name is Rumer Cunha and I'm the course coordinator for SIR 202. Now I want to talk in this video a little bit about our class and what you can, you can expect from it. Uh, but before that, let me just spend a few seconds to introduce myself. So I've been teaching at ASU for about two years uh, in terms of basically software engineering, right? I've been here since fall 2015. I have a BS and an MS. Both those are the, from the very familiar school of Arizona State University. I actually attended our Tempe campus. Uh, the software engineering program, of course, is up at, at the Polytechnic campus. Uh, I'm primarily involved with our courses here on algorithms um, slash data structures, as well as operating systems. My research background is primarily, you know, my research background has, has two aspects. One basically is bioinformatics, so I actually have a background in biology, um, in terms of basically data analysis, right, and trying to understand large data sets. And then also in static analysis, right, so basically taking a look at program, programs and trying to figure out what they do, right, either with maybe statically, meaning before you run them, or dynamically, meaning as they run. Uh, so that's my background. The course I'm going to be discussing here is SIR 202, Design and Analysis of Data Structures and Algorithms. This is a very key course for our program. The basic idea here is to provide you with the kind of the, the overall tool set of what you'll need to solve problems. So this kind of has two aspects. First of all, we have the idea of data structures. Data structures is basically the idea of how do I store something, right? So maybe something like an array or a list, right? These are kind of simple things you've heard of in previous courses. In this course, we'll build on that knowledge. We'll use them to build more complex things, like for example, a hash table or a graphical data st structure, a graph. What we have basically, what we've seen in the past is essentially building blocks, right? And these building blocks, we wanna use them to build more complex things. And then we'll have to also think about when we do this, um, the idea of design considerations, right? So maybe one choice right over another is preferred, right? This is kind of the second aspect, right? Not only are we gonna build things, but we wanna build things that are correct for our situation. The second part of our course is on algorithms. So algorithms is really a, a method, right? A predefined method, right? A predefined idea for how to solve a specific problem. For example, in terms of a graph, right? A graph is something like you can picture you have, you know, nodes connected to edges, right? Basically, it's the idea of I have different things kind of that are related. Uh, graphs are using all over the place, right? For they're using for you, they're using things, for example, like social networks, right? Or maybe modeling a road network. A natural choice question to ask for that is, oh, how, how do I know, right, if maybe two points are connected, right? Do people, two people know each other, right? Is it possible to get from this intersection to another intersection? Well, in order to answer questions like that, we'll need to investigate algorithms, things like breadth first search or depth first search, right? Test ways to test for conductivity in a graph. So that's kind of our flip side, right? If we, if we have ways to express data, right, using some data structure, what sort of algorithms can we have, right, maybe to look at those data structures and understand them, right, to extract meaningful information from the data that's represented. So at a high level, that's what our course is going to be talking about, data and how we kind of manipulate its representations to learn more about it. This course has two prerequisites, discrete math and then a second course in programming. So what am I expecting from there? Um, discrete math, typically I'd expect that people have taken, for example, MAT 243, right? That's the name of the course here at ASU, Discrete Mathematical Structures. What I'm expecting is you have basically the ability to read and write arguments, right? Formal arguments, right? Maybe there's some English there, maybe there's some symbols there, but I want you to be able to show rigorous reasoning, right? Can you think about something? Can you identify a flaw in an argument, right? Is this, is this particular proof unsound? I want to see some idea, right? I want to get some measure that you have, you know, the ability to do this kind of formal rigorous uh, thinking, right? That's what I'm expecting. Various concepts are nice to know, right? Sets, induction, right? We'll use all that. We may use all those things in this course, uh, but overall, just having a rigorous mindset set is what I'm expecting there. The second course is a prerequisite, right? Second course in programming, typically it's something like CSC 205, right? Or you may also have a similar course, for example, CERT 200. What I'm expecting there is that you have some background in how to program in, you know, a language like Java. My expectation is that out of the box, if I give you a problem, you can write code to solve that problem, right? You can do the analysis, you can you know, break it down to programize the code, you can you know, write that in your Java ID, you can run it, you can get an answer back. That's what I'm expecting, right? Uh, and hopefully right, you also have some basic exposure to, to very basic um, collections, right, such as stacks and queues. Um, to go back to the previous point, kind of my main expectation, right, is you're simply able to write code, right? We're, we're past the point where we're going to be teaching syntax, right? We really want to focus on solving problems, and so you should already be good at using a language like Java. In this course, we'll be covering several major topics. For example, recursion, analysis of algorithms, sorting, searching, hash tables, graphs, and a few others. All very interesting topics that all have real-world applications. In terms of the course format, you can expect to have three basic types of assignments. Exercises, short answer, and programming. Exercises are short answer problem sets that are meant to help you engage the material as you move through the book and videos. 
short answer are slightly longer questions to help you really practice the material. Lastly, of course, we have programming. So this is a programming course. Of course, you can do tons of programming every week. So three main things to look forward to. This course has four main outcomes. Let's review them now so you have some idea of what you're getting into. So number one, students can understand and apply big O analysis of algorithms. Students can analyze existing algorithms and use this, these techniques in designing algorithms. Number two, to gain experience in the object-oriented programming paradigm, students understand elementary data structures as objects and as being composed of objects. Students can design objects using elementary data structures. Number three, to learn and to be able to judge the appropriateness of alternative implementations of elementary data structures. Students understand advantages and disadvantages of sequential implementation versus linked implementation. And last, number four, to learn specification and application of elementary data structures. Students know common, commonly used specifications for arrays, stacks, queues, strings, sets, sequential lists, binary search trees, and hash storage. So those are the four main things we're gonna be taking a look at in this course. So once again, my name is Ruben Acuna, and I'm the course coordinator for SUR 202. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at racuna one at acu.edu. Uh, I would actually really like to hear from you guys. It's nice always to kind of get a sense for who is in these classes and what you guys think of the material. I hope you enjoy this semester, and I hope to see you in one of my classes in the future.